very welcome to the next tutorial in a series of tutorials for the Lampy console. In this tutorial we will talk about the playback faders. The 10 playback faders below the intro and touchscreen are the backbone of your programming and show. They may contain one or more cues, whereas each cue might have different timings and values stored. You can also spread the playback faders across multiple pages. Each playback has its own settings that define the behavior of the playback, which may be set from within the faders playback window using the magic wand button. All editing of playback faders is done using the playback fader window, which may be opened by simply clicking on the playback fader label, pushing the edit key on the front panel of the console and the button of the playback fader. The playback fader labels give you a quick overview of the state of the playback. If a playback fader is selected, you see a little hatched background behind the name. This means that this playback fader is also assigned to the master fader. If there is no hatched background, you can still play back this playback using the button below or the faders. When a playback is running, its background color will be displayed in green. When a playback is paused, the background color will be shown in red. When the playback is out fading, it will be shown in yellow. Let's have a look at playback fader pages. Playback fader pages might simply be changed by clicking on the playback page button. Each click on the button advances through the pages. If you press shift while clicking on the playback page button, the playback page directory will open. From in here, you can select pages directly, you can enter a name for them, or you can move them. Let's start to record a queue on a playback. For that, let's change to the fixtures view. Let's select a few fixtures and enter a dimmer value. In this case, we will set the dimmer to zero and record it on the second playback. We can record a playback by clicking on the record key on the front panel and then by selecting the playback either using the playback fader label on screen or by pushing on the playback faders button. Now the console will ask us for a name for the first queue. I will call this queue dimmer at zero. Now let's increase the dimmer value to 100% and select the position preset that we created before. To add a second queue to the same playback, we simply press the record key again and select the same playback. A dialog will pop up asking what we want to do. From within this dialog, click on Add Queue. Let's call this queue start. Let's go into the values tab and change the color. Let's press the record key again and select the same playback. Now from within the fixtures view, only select the floor fixtures. With the floor fixtures only selected, we will press the intensity button and set the dimmer value to zero. Let's press record again and record it as a new queue. Now select all of the fixtures, go to the presets tab, choose gobo and select the gobo preset. Let's select the intensity feature and increase our dimmer to 100%. Now press record and record to the same playback. Now press the clear button three times and click on the fader label of the playback we just created. This will open the playback fader window. From within the playback fader window we have multiple options to modify this queue list and its contained queues. At first let's have a look at the different columns in the playback view. The first column allows you to reorder queues. You can also copy them by pressing the copy key on the front panel and then simply dragging the queue to the end or to wherever you want to copy it to. The next column is the queue ID. The queue ID is automatically generated and usually a full number. You can move queues in between and you will see that the number becomes a decibel number. The next column in the playback view is the name column. You can rename a queue anytime by simply clicking on the cell and double clicking or right clicking. 
Then enter the new name in the keyboard window that pops up and click on enter. The next column is the trick time column. The trick time column indicates the time that needs to pass until this queue will be started. The use of the time, however, depends a little on the trigger of this queue. The trigger is defined in the trigger column, which is the next one to look at. Per default, all queues are triggered manually. That means you need to press go for each of the queues to start. However, you can also give them timings. Double click on the trigger column for the second queue and choose wait. Now you can enter a time and the second queue will start after the time has passed after the queue before was started. Another option would be follow. When a queue is set to follow, it waits until the queue before finished all its timings. Let's see how that looks. Let's press go and the second queue will start after two seconds and the queue with follow will start immediately after queue two finished all of its timings. Let's increase the in fade of queue number two to five seconds. Let's have a look at this again. Q2 will now start after 2 seconds and fades in for 5 seconds. After that, Q3 will automatically be started. We can also add a trick time for the follow queue. In this case, the time can be negative or positive. If it's a negative time, it will be subtracted from the queue timings before. So if I enter minus 2 seconds, the second queue will start and then after three seconds of all the timings have elapsed, the third queue will start. You can also enter a positive number in here. That means that this follow queue will wait two additional seconds until it is started. The last option for the trigger column is to define a queue as a timecode. When you have a timecode signal coming in via MIDI, you can have this queue triggered automatically when a certain time is reached. There is a convenience function in the playback settings that I will come back to later, which helps you to automatically record timecode timings while your timecode is playing. Let's change this queue back to a manual go queue. Now let's have a closer look at the in fade column. The infade column defines the infade time. This is the duration of the crossfade for all fixtures and all parameters that are set to fade in the library that are increasing dimmer values. In delay is the delay that needs to pass for this queue to start any infade after it has been started. It may be changed any time by double, right or long clicking into the cell. Using the in delay time and the infade time is very handy if you're programming a theatrical style show where lots of dimmer values change over time, especially when combined with the outfade and out delay times. The outfade is the duration of the crossfade for all fixtures that have decreasing dimmer values. By default, the outfade is equivalent to the infade. The out delay is basically the same as the infade, but this is the time that needs to pass for this queue to start any outfade after the queue had been started. We do sort of have a little example for that. In queue number 4, floor off, let's change the outfade time to 3 seconds and the out delay to 2 seconds. When we now start queue number 4, this change will only happen after these timings have, el have elapsed. You can also combine them, for example if we turn on other fixtures in queue number 4, they will use the infade time. Let's do this right now, as it will also show you how to modify cues. Let's go to the fixtures view and select our front lighting fixtures. Let's set the dimmer to 100%, go back to the playback view, and now press the record key on the front panel and simply click on any column of queue number four. The console now asks us what we would like to do. We have the option to either remove the values that are in the programmer from a queue 
we can replace the entire queue or we can merge the new information into the queue. In this case, we want to merge the information into the new queue. Let's clear the programmer and skip back to the previous queue. When I go queue number four, the front lights will come on in one second without any delay, but the floor fixtures will fade out in three seconds after two seconds of delay. Let's go queue number five. This brings us to the in-snap column. The in-snap column defines when parameters that are set to snap in the library will snap relative to the fade time. In this example, the gobos snapped at the beginning of the queue fade. Let's change the in-snap value to 100%. Let's skip a queue back and go this queue again. Now you see that the gobos will snap at the end of the fade. The next column, MIB, is also very useful for theatrical style shows or for complete songs that are programmed within one playback. MIB is an abbreviation and it means move in black, where the console will look ahead inside this queue list and preposition parameters for fixtures that are raising dimmer value above zero. It does that automatically to prevent ugly transitions where you would normally see the fixture move any of the attributes into position while the fixture is fading in. Let's enable MIB for our queue with the gobo. Now let's have a look again at our queue list. Our lights fade in. They fade to yellow. Now we have to manually go over floor of queue. And now the floor fixtures should come on automatically with the gobo in already. Whereas the roof fixtures crossfade in the on because they have not been turned off in between. Let's turn MIB on for the start queue. Now you see that our lights are automatically positioned and they're not fading into the position while they turn on. Please note that for MIB to work, the fixture needs to have a zero value stored for the dimmer somewhere in the queue list. This is the reason why our first queue has dimmer at zero. The last column, load values, can be used to load a queue to the programmer. Let's load the values of queue number three. And let's have a look at the fixtures values view. Let's go back to the playback view. We have already learned how we can add values or change values in a queue in a playback. To delete the queue from a playback, press the delete button, followed by the queue in the list. The console will ask for confirmation. Another way to copy a queue instead of dragging it to its new position is to press the copy key and simply click on one of the columns. You can also rename a queue by pushing the name key on the front panel and then just selecting the queue from the playback view. Please note that you can copy any playback at any time by using the copy key, selecting the playback and selecting the destination. Or you can also move a playback by pressing and holding the shift key, pressing copy, selecting the playback and then select its new destination. Please keep in mind that while you may copy playbacks between playbacks and scenes and executors to playbacks, you cannot copy a playback to an executor or scene. The same applies for any move operations. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial and I hope to see you again soon.